Good morning, and welcome to this morning's worship service. Um, I might need to move this mic down just a scotch. <laughs> All righty. Uh, glad that you're here with us today, whether you're joining us in person or live on Facebook or checking it out later on YouTube. However you're joining us, we're glad that you're here and that you're part of this worship service. Uh, we do have just a couple of quick announcements, and uh, I want to begin by with a heartfelt thank you for June and all that she has done for this church as she's going to be relocating, and so we're going to be staying in touch, but uh, you know, Rochester, I think, is a, is a pretty tough commute. <laughs> So uh, we'll, we'll be keeping June in prayers for traveling mercies and all that as, as she's going through that transition of relocating. So uh, we want to remember, remember her and that and her family. We also, this past week, for those of you who don't know, we did uh, lose Mike, Mike Leach. Um, he and his family are glad to receive... Uh, prayers, Con, you know, they, they really, they've got a lot of family, and that's a beautiful thing, and it's a, it's a necessary thing in times like this, but the kids and all, they seem to be doing pretty well right now, and, uh, but the hard part is going to come, of course, as we all know, as we move further into uh, life, and those quiet times, quiet times can be dangerous for us. So we do want to keep them in prayer, and anything you can do, drop a card, you know. I've never known any kid, especially a kid, who didn't love to get mail. <laughs> and too many times anymore, we just do digital stuff. Um, but actually, sending a note is, is, would be, I think, very well received. Yes. Thank you. That's right. It, it was incorrect in the directory because when I went by the directions in the directory, I went the wrong way. <laughs> I was on the north side of town and I was, well, this just doesn't seem right. <laughs> so uh, they are at, at one hillside. Okie dokie. Um, we do have, let's see, today we're doing uh, installation of officers, but in light of installation of officers, I do want to recognize two officers who were rotating off. Uh, well, we have multiple officers right, rotating off, but some are just turning around and coming right back, <laughs> for which we're also grateful. But uh, I want to extend a special thank you to Sharon Hunter and Taryn Jerosic for their service and dedication to this church and all that they've done, not only for the ministry of this church, but the ministry of this community. And so I think that we're, we're good in thanking them for their dedication and stewardship to the life of this and ministry of this church. So let's see, we do have tomorrow night, just so everybody knows, we do have one of the things, I, I, we, we don't always communicate every little thing that session does, because if we did, it would drive you nuts. <laughs> Unless you're on session, but it still could be. <laughs> but session is meeting tomorrow night. One of the things that we have been meeting regularly about and having a dedicated meeting for is church sustainability and what it's going to look like. Okay? So this is something that Session is diligent about at this time. Some of you serve on committees, and, and you know because you've been having that conversation, pretty intense conversation these past couple of months. So we're continuing that, and hopefully we'll have some more, let's say, defined goals as we look 
forward to the annual report and annual meeting coming up February 7th. Is that right, Sue? Uh, Sixth. First, first Sunday of February. <laughs> first Sunday of February. So uh, we'll look forward to that and, and just kind of getting a feel for how we're doing as we move forward. Because that's what it's about. It's about finding new and creative ways to serve God. And one of the ways that you're going to hear about that in today's service is when we have these officers up here. And they're questioned, you know, I got to put them on, you got to grill them over something. But one of the questions is about using their imagination for the ministry of the church. And I love this banner, uh, the stewardship banner. What I, one of the things I like about it, yeah, yeah, you can see the little dollar sign and the little cent sign on there too. But you also see a clock. And hammer and nails and utens uh, eating utensils and paint buckets and piano. I'm guessing those are piano or organ keys. I don't know. That's <laughs> what they look like to me. It's about the various talents, and you'll hear more about that, of course, in the sermon. But it is a beautiful banner, and it's just a great reminder for how we serve. It's not just about that thing over there on the right. It's about all of it. It's not about one aspect of our life. It's about our entire life. Well, we're getting closer to the sermon now, so I'll cut there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, and we, we have begun the Wednesday night Bible study, which you can also join by Zoom. You'll find that uh, connect, uh, a link to that Zoom, which is taking, if you want to be here live, it's in the fireside room. If you want to join us on Zoom, it's at 7 p.m. You'll get the link in Tuesday's email. It'll be the same until through the end of February, and then I'll do another one for the last couple of classes. So, uh, ta -da -ta -da. and I think that's enough chat from me on the announcements. Do we have any other announcements? Very good. Well, in that case, just take a moment, stand and from a distance, <laughs> greet one another in the name of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> Let us settle ourselves for worship. <laughs>
is meteorology. Lord of, I'm sorry, loyalty, astronomic. God's purpose, verdicts, oceanic. That vast largeness, nothing gets lost. Not a person, not a mouse, slips through the cracks. How exquisite your love, O oh God. How eager we are to run your wings. To eat our fill at the banquet you spread. As you fill our tankers, we as we are. You're a fountain of cascading light. And you open our eyes. darkness of our world and of our hearts. Trusting in God's saving love, let's confess our sins. Almighty God, we confess that we have been led astray by the idols of our world. We have depended on our possessions and have not placed our trust in your grace. We have carelessly consumed the gifts you offer and have failed to be faithful stewards of the earth's resources. We have sought security in the might of the soul, rather than the strength of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us, we pray. Lead us to true repentance, that we may serve you faithfully. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ unmasks the idols of our world and frees us from slavery to all that would oppress us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. <laughs>
lesson comes from Psalms, chapter 36, verses 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your judgments are like the great deep. You say humans and animals alike, O Lord, how precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you it is the fountain of life, in your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. see any young ones to come forward today so we'll scoot along to minute for mission good morning so many of us in the congregation um, have longed to do more hands-on missions and so with keeping this in mind um, Session has decided that this year, on the fifth Sundays, uh, there's four of them this year, we will uh, have a shorter worship service and then we are going to go out and do a mission. Well, because of um, the COVID restrictions and the unpredictability of the weather, um, we decided that uh, this, that our first one is January 20, or 30th, I'm sorry, that we will go to Shinneman Hall and put together um, 
kits for the Center for New Americans, which is part of Interfaith Works, one of their programs. Um, they need actually many different kits. Um, we're looking at kitchen ones, bathroom, personal care, things like that, um, baby kits. And so we decided that we were going to do, actually we started out, we wanted to do two different ones, but um, turned out to be a little bit more costly than we had expected, and so we decided we're just going to concentrate on one kit, and that will be the uh, personal care kits. Um, so it, this, this program welcomes um, refugees from around the world, and we're expecting that there are going to be some Afghans, so that'll be interesting. Um, so the committee has purchased the items um, to make it easier, so that we don't, you know, have all the enough of everything to make the kits. And um, so after worship on the 30th, we will go to Shinneman Hall, we're going to have gloves, masks, we're going to be socially distanced, and we're going to put together these kits. There will also be um, a time, an opportunity for us to write perhaps a personal note to put inside these kits. Um, Whatever you know, welcoming people or you know, telling them who these are, these are the kids are from. Um, so you know, it should be interesting. It should be fun, and um, you know, after we'll see how this one works out, and then we'll try something else. So we hope you all will join us after worship on the thirtieth, and uh, we'll see you then. Wonderful, wonderful. Please pray with me. Gracious God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, quicken our understanding that we may receive the testimony of Scripture and believe in the signs that reveal your presence. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, excuse me, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you, when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaks by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, to another, utterance of knowledge according to that same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the Spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, 
When we look at this text today and we see what's going on around us, take a moment in any given worship service and look around you. You're going to see Marion over there at the, uh, tickling the ivories, as they say, and, and working on that organ and the piano and exercising her spiritual gift. You'll see Alan doing what Alan does and conducting and leading. You'll see the choir who, though they would really rather be singing, <laughs> have adapted through leadership and what, what we are limited by. So what are they doing? They're ringing the bells now. So the choir has become a bell choir. It's about following the Spirit as the Spirit leads us. Not where we would have the Spirit lead us. <laughs> That's the hard part, because we tend to think we know where we want to go and what we're good at. Have you ever had somebody tell you what you're good at? If you haven't, talk to more people. Because sometimes, no matter, no matter our age, no matter our experience, sometimes it takes someone who's inspired by the Spirit to see the talent that you have, to see the gift that God has given you, to help draw it out and make it a part of the common good. You see, that's one of the things that Paul was big on is not a faith is not a private thing faith is not something that we take and we hide in a closet and we just thumb through the pages all by ourselves faith is meant to be lived out and experienced in community therefore when we have gifts that God has given us we're not called to squirrel them away to ourselves or maybe just on special occasions we're called to bring them out into the light and share them for the common good I've got a couple of different examples of uh, one is less a spiritual gift the other one but but it, they're, they're good examples so just bear with me a moment it was several years ago, two students graduated from Chicago Kent College of Law. The highest ranking student in the class was blind. His name was Mr. Overton. Mr. Overton, when he received this honor, he insisted that half his credit should go to his friend, Kasbrzak. They had met one another in school when armless Mr. Kaprizak helped guide blind Mr. Overton down the flight of stairs. This acquaintance ripened into a friendship and a beautiful example of interdependence or working together. The blind man could carry the books as the man with no arms could read them aloud for his friend. After their graduation, they planned to practice law together, all because they weren't afraid to realize who they were, but not accept that as a limitation, but to celebrate it as a way to connect with others. And that's what they both did in that moment. Uh, but I really like this other example as well. There's a great violinist. I, I don't know great violinists. I know violinists, and, and they're pretty great. <laughs> but, you know, when you talk about the great ones, I have no idea. <laughs> so this could just be a, a plumber from somewhere in uh, Europe. I don't know. <laughs> Nicola Paganini willed his marvelous violin to Giona, the city of his birth. 
But he had one condition over giving them this beautiful instrument. It was never to be played again. Now again, I'm counting, uh, Alan, I'm counting on what's written here. <laughs> I know nothing about instruments. Well, apparently when you take something like a wooden instrument, such as a violin, and you put it in a case to be admired and really don't do anything with it, it decays. It rots. It got worms in the wood. <coughs> it became good for nothing other than an old looking piece of wood with strings as a relic. Losing its ability to play that beautiful music that this great violinist was accustomed to providing on it. So when we don't use our spiritual gifts, that's kind of what happens to them. They decay. They, uh, you ever had a cast on your arm or leg? That muscle goes through something called atrophy, shrinks. Now, you can build it back up, but it takes time and effort. It doesn't happen magically. It doesn't happen just because you remove the cast. You have to start retraining yourself. After a back surgery, straightening the back can change your center of gravity. Some people have to relearn how to walk. Something that they've done since they were about 12 months old. But they had to relearn It's about exercising those gifts that we have. It's about celebrating that. And one of the ways that we do that as a congregation is through stewardship. Now, I'm probably talking a little less about the little symbols now. <laughs> than I am about the hammer and the tools and the keyboard and the clock because it's about using who we are, who God made us to be into service for God's church. That sounds like a pretty big responsibility, doesn't it? I think it does. Y'all might be, oh, that's just another walk in the park. <laughs> For me, it seems like a pretty big responsibility. Well, you have a unique group of individuals who do just that. You have a group of individuals who, for them, this is what they're called to do. And you probably have been one of those people once upon a time. Someone who's ready to step up and serve the church through leadership. Now, some leaders, you know, some people think, oh, leadership means I'm going to have to stand up here and do all of this stuff in front of people, and not always. Because as we were just reading in 1 Corinthians, there's all kinds of different gifts of the Spirit. Those are not even the only ones. <laughs> this isn't a, a list of Exactly, you're going to get one of these. It's an example. It's a list of opportunities. It's a list to be sensitive to. And so when we have individuals who are willing to step forward, whether they're with building and grounds and, and doing all of this behind the scenes stuff, or maybe they're deacons and they're making phone calls to folks who just need to hear a friendly voice, or dropping a card in the mail. There are all kinds of ways to serve the church. Now, the folks that you're going to see up here in just a minute have agreed to utilize their spiritual gift 
for leadership in the church. Here's the part that I really want you guys to know that doesn't exclude you. <laughs> that doesn't mean, oh, we've got session for that. Let them take care of it. Oh, the deacons will do that. That's not who we are. We're called to serve God and to celebrate our spiritual gifts, not just when we're serving as a church officer, but all the time. That's why we need people who are willing to ring bells. <laughs> we need people who are willing to uh, teach the kids. We need people who are willing to pack these uh, things together like we're going to start doing on those fifth Sundays. We need people who are ready to celebrate the gift that God has given them. Now, even if you don't, you might think, well, you know what? I'm just not really that good at putting stuff in boxes. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to be good at it. <laughs> Sometimes we just need hands. One of the things that we've done in a, a church in the past was we, we would have, we did a pumpkin patch. So we would, uh, it's a whole thing. I won't get into the whole thing. But when you're unloading a truck, you don't care if somebody has a spiritual gift for unloading a truck. <laughs> you need hands. And we had, uh, and to the point that we even had one fella I think he was 92 there. He could not handle the pumpkins because they were some of them were large, but he counted for us. He helped us keep track so that we knew how many we more we needed to unload. But you know, pretty much if they were older than about eight, and we had some as old as 80 who were out there to unload those pumpkins because the sale of those pumpkins meant money for missions. Then that money for missions went to bringing purified water to small villages in the Dominican Republic. Everything was connected. Still serving God. And that's what we're called to do. That's how these officers who have rotated off, that's what they've done in serving God and will continue to serve. And that's what these who are called today will do as they are stepping forward. Well, some of them, as I said, are stepped down and then right back up. So <laughs> we take leadership and we want to embrace it wherever it is, for whatever capacity they're willing to step forward with. But God calls us to do this. It's something to be celebrated, not bereaved, not, oh man, I got to do this. <laughs> it's something that should excite us. It's something that should stir us to a point that we are ready to serve. And in doing that, acknowledging and celebrating who God is in our lives. Because that's what it circles back around to. Go back to the beginning of this passage. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be misinformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. So, he acknowledges who they were before. But their faith has transformed them. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaks by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. That can't happen by the Spirit of God. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Can we say Jesus is Lord? That's by the Holy Spirit. There it is. 
Why? Because Jesus is Lord. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we acknowledge. That is our inspiration as we seek to serve and, and love our community of faith. And I don't mean inside these walls. I mean beyond these walls. That's one of the things that I do want to take just a moment and acknowledge. There are some individuals throughout history who have changed the way that we view Scripture. Now, Scripture is what points, it, it is straight from the experience of Christ. And so what happens when we hear different interpretations, different understandings, is exactly what you're seeing here today. <laughs> How we hear and receive these holy scriptures. Well, tomorrow is a day that we remember Martin Luther King Jr. An individual who helped redefine how we understand scripture, who helped understand better what it meant to be an example of Christ. Now, I, I, this is something that when I was in Atlanta, I learned a lot more about it. But one of the things is, it's not about, oh, this, you know, like a, a President's Day where we're honoring presidents. If you want to honor Martin Luther King Jr., then the way that I've seen it done best, and I think this goes across the board, is you volunteer in the community. We actually had a day of volunteering uh, in Alabama. Now it's harder to do up here because it's zero outside. <laughs> and I think we're supposed to get like a foot of snow. Kind of makes it hard to rake leaves and, and stuff like that when there's a foot of snow on top of it. Um, but we took that opportunity that day. It was not about having a special parade. It was not about doing anything other than service to the community. Service to the community. And so we did. We, we went out and there were some playgrounds for some, uh, some child development centers that were in an impoverished area. We went in and helped fix that up some. They, they needed a lot of hands-on stuff done. Well, you know what? When you have 20 people from a church, and you've got several different churches around. Let me tell you, they got a lot of churches across the South. Uh, <laughs> you get all these different folks coming together can make a big difference. And all of that is to say, exercising spiritual gifts. So today, in just a minute, right here, we will be celebrating as we welcome new leadership into this church so my thought as closing is it's not about well I I see we get, we're going to have elders Sue March, Charlie Smith, Helen Stevens and deacons Robin Jackson and Jane Horrell it's not about <coughs> well let me see what kind of list I can come up with for them <laughs> It's about how can I help support them in serving the church? That's where our minds should go this week. So let's just have a quick prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Holy Scriptures and Holy Spirit. For your presence in our lives to inspire us and transform us that we can be creative in finding ways to serve you in Christ. Amen. like to invite forward those that I just named. <laughs> and we'll, 
we'll get to the affirmation of faith in just a moment. Y'all, uh, come on up here and spread out a little bit. I want everybody to be able to see you. <laughs> <laughs> there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit who gives them there are different ways of serving God but it is the same Lord who is served God works through each person in unique way but it is God's purpose that is accomplished to each is given a gift of the spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individual members of it. Well, I warned y'all there would be a test, right? <laughs> okay, well, um, we are going to go through our statement of ordination. Aha. So, uh, first of all, we are called to the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common call to be disciples of Christ and servants of our Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to a particular service as deacons and ruling elders and also as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among each one of us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion for the, in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. So the session also is installing to active service those who have been previously ordained. Actually, all everybody up here is already previously ordained. So we'll just be installing today. All y'all. <laughs> In baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed, in the grace of Jesus Christ and anointed with gift of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. I told you I'd get to them. <laughs> Do you trust in Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him, Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? Amen. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you, do you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? Water. Some of these questions are longer than the sermon. <laughs> Let's see. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity, and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordaining, excuse me, to the ordering 
of God's word and spirit, will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. Will you pray for all and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? Now, this question is just for the deacons. Deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And now to the elders. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the governance and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. Oh, y'all, <laughs> do we, members of this church, accept all of these as ruling elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead in the way of Jesus Christ? Do you? Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. Do we? Let us pray. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for all these, your servants, as they continue in ministry to which you have called them, Help them to rely on their gifts of your spirit to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in their actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. By the gifts of your Holy Spirit, empower them to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision in the walk of faith and for the work of ministry. Give to all your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain your church in ministry. Ground us in the gospel, secure our hopes in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness to the world, to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the people say, Amen. Well, y'all, you are deacons and ruling elders ordained to ministry of service and governance in the church of Jesus Christ for this congregation. And we're going to not do the hand shaking thing, but we'll do the Korean thing of hands at your hips and we gently bow. Thank you and welcome. And now as you all are able, 
Please stand with me as we affirm our faith together with the newly installed, utilizing the Apostles' Creed ecumenical version found on page 14. So I ask you, friends, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, not just by that, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. Are there additional prayer concerns? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Others. Yes, sir. Prayers, my friend, Tom and Dee Dee and his family, uh, Tom's wife, Amanda, died yesterday of breast cancer. Oh, wow. Three kids. Three kids. And what was his name? Tom and Dee Dee. Tom? Yeah. Others. Yeah. Carl. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm sorry, but what was his name again? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to have prayers for, I know the, the storm that's coming through, but it's already hitting down in Georgia where our daughter is, so that means it's impacting a lot of other people. They're having um, ice and rain right now. It's going to turn over to snow, and as you know, being a southerner, they have like zero clouds and zero ways of dealing yep. with all this. Ten years ago today, our son-in-law fell on the ice with a baby in his arms and badly broke his leg, so it's... Not a good anniversary for that. We don't want that to happen again. But prayers for all those people that are they're probably going to lose power, they said. So uh, prayers for all those in harm's way. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That was Kathy? Kathy. All right. Anyone else? And let us go to God in prayer. Holy One, in peace we pray to you, asking for your mercy that you would hear our prayers. So loving God in everything, in every gathering of Christian believers, you bring together a people of gifts, strengths, and needs to manifest the universal body of Christ. So we pray for your church throughout this world that every local congregation may live as sisters and brothers in harmony, showing forth the light of Christ to the world. In every age you raise up, servant leaders for your people. So Lord, in your mercy, hear this prayer. And Lord, there are so many, 
so many struggling during this time with the storms that are coming all across the south, all the way up to where we are, Lord. We would pray that, especially for those places that struggle with the resources to deal with these storms, that people be safe, that they have the wisdom, your wisdom, Lord, to stay safe and warm and dry until the storm ultimately passes. And Lord, we pray especially for John and as he has lost his dad, that you comfort him and help him in those transitions. We pray for Amanda's family, that you bring comfort and just knowledge of your presence to all of our loved ones. We pray for Carl's brother. Lord, we pray especially for his family as there so many decisions that they'll be facing, so many struggles that they continue to have to deal with, Lord. May your presence be known to them. May they know also, Lord, that they are in our prayers, as all these are. Lord, we pray for Cat, that wisdom of yours be imparted to the doctors and nurses and caregivers for good diagnoses, for good results. And Lord, we pray for all who mourn, all who grieve this day, all who face uncertainty, whether that uncertainty comes from lack of food, lack of resources, or lack of love, lack of a caring presence, lack of understanding. But Lord, we know through you we can find all these things. And that's why we pray. We come to you and we pray. We pray that all who are facing all of the side effects of COVID, all of the variants that go along with it, all of the results in all of the hospitals that push others out to make room. Lord, there's so much confusion, so much anxiety. So may you bring a calmness. May you bring understanding. May you bring wholeness to the communities that have been affected by all of these. And Lord, we know that we can come to you boldly as we seek answers to these prayers. As Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. God is a generous giver of gifts that flows from river to river, from fountain of life. So by bringing, and, and by bringing offerings and tributes with thanks and praise for the gifts that we are... <laughs> Sorry, I switched masks and it's throwing me off a bit with the, my glasses... <laughs> God is a generous giver of gifts that flow like a river from the fountain of life. Bring offerings and tributes with thanks and praise for the gifts we give are the gifts of God. 
And so as we are back to some of our restrictions, the offering plates are in the narthex as well as located here by the door. Uh, there are other ways to send in offering through, uh, you can drop it by the office, the mail, or also online giving. So as we have received, let us be generous in our giving. join me in prayer. Holy One, we offer our gifts with grateful hearts. Bless them in our lives in your service, that they may reveal the glory of the nurture of God. And now, friends, let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. May the Spirit's love, flowing like water across the face of the earth, fill you with every gift for the good of the world. And the blessing of God, eternal source, fountain of life, and giver of gifts, be with you this day and always. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen.